I'm standing on the Canadian-American border between the small towns of Rock Island, Quebec, and Derby Line, Vermont. Ordinarily, a border separates two countries, but here at Derby Line, it's a little more complicated. Here, it runs right through the middle of this factory, runs through the middle of this library, and right through the middle of this house. The house belongs to the Bolduck family, a family of four who've lived here for 20 years. Their front door is in America, while their back door is in Canada. The border has not only divided the house, but the family as well. Mr. and Mrs. Bolduck are Canadian. Their son, Mike, is Canadian, but their daughter, Arlette, is American. Do you pay American or Canadian property taxes? We pay uh, Canadian taxes and also American taxes. Because Mr. Bolduck pays more American property taxes, he likes to spend most of his time in America, where they've also placed their television set. We uh, watch TV in the uh, American side, and uh, we go to bathroom in Canadian side. Arlette, on the other hand, sleeps in both countries, and she says to help maintain her U.S. citizenship, she sleeps with her head south of the border. It's, it's kind of strange when you think about it to, to be sleeping in two countries at the same time. What has it been like for you, Mrs. Bolduck, living in a house that straddles the border? I think it's, it's fun in a way, but... Uh... But, Mrs. Bolduck said, because she likes to buy most of her groceries in Canada, it costs her more money. Not that the prices are higher, but when she gets back from the store, she has to check in at American Customs. And since they all know what she's fixing for dinner, she said she just can't feed the family fish and chips or hamburger helper. Mrs. Bolduck said with all the inconvenience they should draw the line somewhere, and they did, right through the building housing the library and opera house. Following a fire a few years ago, a Canadian and American insurance company drew the line to see which country's company would pay the claim. The fire was in the United States, by about a foot. The borderline extends upstairs to the opera house above the library. We have an entrance to the opera house on the American side, but then we have three entrances on the Canadian side. Because of this unique locale, it was a spot secretly chosen by the Beatles to meet and discuss a possible reunion. John Lennon didn't want to leave the United States for fear he wouldn't be let back in. George Harrison and Paul McCartney couldn't enter the States because of charges against them. And uh, Ringo was the only one that was free to cross back and forth. So this was the only place in the world where they could legally meet and not break any of the laws. The Beatles never got together, and on the largest building straddling the border, it's tough for Canadians and Americans to get together. The building is Butterfields, one of the countries, each country's largest manufacturers of industrial drills. The uh, Canadian Accounting Department is in this office, and the American Accounting is over there, over the river. How do you get inter-office memos back and forth to one another? Through mail. Ray, if you needed a, uh, a package or material from one side of your factory, could you just bring it down the hallway or across here and bring it onto this side of your factory? Absolutely not. Every, everything that goes through uh, from one factory to the other goes by highway and is exported like it uh, would be if it was coming from a thousand miles away. Indeed, while we were there, we followed this truck from the Canadian side of the factory, which was being sent to the American side of the factory to pick up emergency supplies and equipment. To get to the other side, the driver passes through Rock Island, Quebec, checks in at American Customs and Immigration, and then drives a mile or so around to the American side of the factory to pick up its load. Then it has to haul the load over five miles down another highway to Canadian Customs, where it is checked carefully. In this instance, the paperwork required by both countries weighed almost as much as the load itself. If getting something from one side of the factory to another can be complicated, you should see what it's like for Ray Greenwood to get from one side of Canusa Street to the other. Here, Canada's in the right lane, and America, where he lives, is in the left, but he just can't turn into his driveway. I drive past my home, send a, a U.S. Customs and report. This is a routine he must follow every day whenever he leaves his home, either by car or by foot. If I were to borrow a cup of sugar from uh, uh, my neighbor on the Canadian side or I wanted a bottle of bourbon from over there, the only way I could uh, procure that would be to go through customs. The wide open spaces here present a security problem for the Border Patrol personnel who are ever on the alert. To detect the location of illegal immigrants and smugglers, they've installed highly sophisticated electronic devices. One of our locations, uh, we kept getting intrusions, and uh, finally one of the officers located the, the person setting it off, and it was a porcupine. Now, what happened to the porcupine? Well, we, we dispatched him so we wouldn't be getting false signals. 
Americans and French Canadians are separated by the border, by the language, and by the culture. But they do have one thing in common. At the border lounge on the Vermont side, the Americans gather to talk about the French Canadians. What do you call a 21-year-old French Canadian in the second grade? What? Very intelligent. <laughs> Here at the Del Monte bar on the Canadian side, the French Canadians gather to talk about the Americans. Comment t'appelles un Américain de 20 ans en deuxième année? Je sais pas. Un gars bien intelligent. The French battled the British in the Plains of Abraham in Quebec. The Americans won freedom from the British during the War of Independence. According to modern surveyors, the actual border line isn't here, but about a half a mile south, which would make Derby Line Canadian. But both countries have been forced to live with this existing border line, which was laid out almost 200 years ago by a drunken British surveyor, which makes this Britain's final revenge. <laughs>